Call this meeting to order. Apologize for the delay, but I sorry to inconvenience you, but I think it'll pay off for you down the road. Uh, roll call. Let the record reflect that all commissioners are here. Approval of minutes. We have the uh, six eight executive session and a special exec on six twenty nine, and also the regular meeting of six eight. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second, do we approve the minutes <coughs> of the executive and the regular meetings as discussed? Any additional? One point of clarification on okay, when we were talking about the Cleveland Avenue property there. I had to find where I was first. When we were uh, talking about the Cleveland Avenue property, I don't think this is taken down wrong. I just want to make sure as a point of clarification that uh, Councilwoman Nelson Deutsch said that she thought one of the things that struck her from a meeting she attended was that John Doyle, that the land was invaluable for development. I think the way that's written is that it seems to refer to the Cleveland Avenue property when in fact uh, he's referring to the FLP property. Obviously, the Cleveland Avenue property is worth somewhere around $300,000. The FOP property, I don't know what it's appraised at or anything like that, but in terms of any kind of future utilization on behalf of the Redevelopment of our, uh, Commission uh, was nil. I just want to point that, that, that point of clarification. Thank you. Good point. Thank you. All right. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Approval of claims. Okay. Claims. Okay. Approval of claims. Uh, this is a uh, Department of Redevelopment claims docket for July 13, 2020. Uh, for June, June 2020, we had uh, payroll, CDBG reimbursables, staff and commissioners, uh, redevelopment operating fund, Alan Saranac monthly retainer for June 2020, the Great American Financial uh, copier fee for June 2020, uh, Redevelopment Association of Indiana annual membership dues, uh, the North TIF fund. City of Michigan City reimbursement wired for 2015 Wabash Street bond debt service payment. Uh, City of Michigan City reimbursement wire refunded 2019 Lafayette Barker bond lease payment. City of Michigan City reimbursement wire 2011 uh, Elston Grove bond lease payment. And Taro Group for Waste Inc. project review and coordination. August Mack for Phase 2 for 121 and 127 East 10th. Uh, Butler Fairman Seifert for Singing Sands Phase 2 inspections, Department of Waterworks for Utilities for 1215 East 2nd Street, Austin Associates for Engineering, Pine and 9th Street resurfacing, Neighborhood Capital Transition uh, for the Station Block, Pine Street uh, Transition Services, NIPSCO for Utilities at 1215 uh, second, uh, East 2nd Street, PR's Lawn Service for Landscape Maintenance on various lots in the North Tiff, Plus Shally, Reicher and Braun for legal fees, um, from 53120 for uh, 1002 Franklin Street. Alan J. Serenak for um, legal fees for June 2020 North Tith. Stager Hardware, which is reimbursement fees paid for the re roof per the MOU. Uh, the South Tith Fund. City of Michigan City reimbursement of wire for 2018 Ohio Street bond lease payment. Uh, City of Michigan City uh, reimbursement wire transfer for 2019 double track bond lease Michigan City uh, City of Michigan City reimbursement for 2015 refunded Cleveland Ave bond lease City of Michigan City reimbursement 2015 refunded 400 North bond debt service payment Department of Redevelopment inner transfer to the Northeast from to the Northeast TIF from Cheney Run for the Cheney Run project 
Global Engineering for Engineering, Village Road Reconstruction, Haas and Associates uh, Project Management for Town Center Road Extension, PR's Land Service for Landscape Maintenance, various South TIF lots, uh, 2018 Street, 2018 Ohio Street Bond, U.S. Bank Administration Fees for 2018, Ohio Street Bond, Sanitary District of Michigan City for reimbursement fees for the Village Road Southwind Drive Stormwater Improvement Project, uh, the 1999 GAF Bond, Sanitary District of Michigan City, uh, reimbursement fees for the Cheney Run Recreational Amenities Design Matching Funds, Sanitary District of Michigan City, reimbursement fees for Cheney Run Wetland Project Matching Funds. All right, any questions of Skylar on the claims? Scott, my only question is though, um, the uh, 1002 Franklin Street, what, what property is that? That is uh, the Lakeshore Convenience property, um, right on the southeast corner of 10th and Franklin. It used to be a dry, it's been a dry cleaners, it's been oh, okay. um, a convenience store. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anything else for Skyler? I'll entertain a motion to approve. Second. Motion a second. We approve the claims as presented. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Financials? Um, this is a Michigan City uh, Department of Redevelopment balance sheet for uh, zero. Um, May 31st, 2020, uh, cash operating account. Hold on a second. We have $147,612.49. South, South Side TIF account, $5,108,000, $5,108,373.76. South Side TIF uh, debt re reserve account, $336,219.51. South Side TIF capital account, $17,421.59. North End TIF account, $3,321,232.28. Wabash Street, Streetscape Construction, $121,192.83. Wabash Street, uh, Streetscape Debt Reserve, uh, two hundred fifteen thousand nine hundred sixty-three dollars and ten cents. Uh, Northeast TIF account one hundred thirty-six thousand dollars one one hundred thirty-six thousand one hundred five dollars and thirty cents. Loans receivable uh, loan to the East Side TIF from operating account twenty-one thousand dollars and twenty twenty-one thousand twenty-eight dollars and forty-nine cents. County business loan fund one hundred thirty-three thousand three hundred thirty-three dollars. Total assets nine million five hundred fifty nine thousand four hundred eighty two dollars and thirty five cents. Okay, any questions on the financials? Sorry about that. Yes, you are correct. I'm sorry. No, you are correct. Yes. Okay, any additional? That will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Motion second. Do we approve the financials as presented? <clears throat> any additional discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, facade grants for the Uptown Theater. Um. So tonight we have uh, Miss Lily Rosada here to present to us. She's going to be presenting our uh, our uh, facade grants. Um, the this facade tonight is the Uptown Center. You might recall the Uptown Center downtown, the old church uh, that's has events. The new owners are here, and uh, they would like to make a presentation to us. So Lily, come on. I'll have her review the facades first, and then we'll have, the, have them give their presentation.
Push your button. Is it green? Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. <laughs> My name is Lillian Rosado. I'm the Associate City Planner for City of Michigan City. Um, we have two facade grants that are being requested. Both of them are from Uptown Theater. It is 903 and 907 Franklin. I will start uh, by saying that there is a amendment to 907 Franklin. Um, the amount to be paid by owner was put down as $54,100. It's actually $53,100. Um, so on 907 Franklin, they are the total improvement cost is estimated at $83,100. Um, 33,400 of that is roofing costs, and then the tuck pointing is estimated at 30,000. They are requesting the maximum amount for the forgivable loan, which is 30,000. Um, that is about 36% of the total cost of the project. Um, they have received COAs. Um, they applied on one COA certificate for 903 and 907. That was COA 12. So they have worked with Deb Parcell. Um, she's our community preservation specialist. Um, she's hired out of Indiana Landmarks. Um, so they did receive that and they have submitted all the required documentation. Um, going on to 903 Franklin, um, the masonry was estimated at $60,200. Roofing was estimated at $23,950 for a total improvement cost of $84,150. They are also requesting the maximum amount, which is the $30,000 $30, for the forgivable loans, um, and that's estimated as 35% of the total cost of the project. Um, I'm going to call Tim up here to give a little bit more information about what it is that they're doing and the vision for the Uptown Center. Hello everybody, thanks for having us. I'm Tim Henry. Hi, Nick Maglio. Sorry, I'm not used to talking through the mask. So, we want to thank the Commission for the time and the consideration of what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, we've gotten to know some of you over the phone electronically during these, uh, I guess you can call it unprecedented times. Um, in short, what we're trying to do and what we've sent to the Commission, um, you know, to kind of when reviewing what uh, the project actually is, there's really three pillars that go into this project. And it's what we feel are three pillars that really make up what makes Michigan City so unique and so great. And it's the culture, the community, and then ultimately commerce. So the culture that's associated with Michigan City has a very rich history. The Uptown Theater, the Canterbury Theater, the church has been around since 1867. So what this project ultimately is, is we're trying to bring back the culture that's been around in this building for many years and, and tie in a lot of uh, the prior owners and the thoughts and the work that's been done on it. But ultimately what really draws us to this project is the community. And it's the residents that live in the area, but it's also what we feel very interesting about is the artists. There's a huge amount of artistic talent in the Michigan City area. And we feel if we can re revitalize you know, the Uptown Theater into something that can be a place of collaboration and a place to display some of the great talent that's in Michigan City, we're really eager to see that happen. And then obviously we are you know, talking to the Redevelopment Commission. We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the ultimate commerce that we think could be derived from um, this project. We do have some rough projections. We didn't put anything formal together tonight and we're happy to share that with you. But in total, this project is going to go into about 1.1 million, including the building purchase. The exterior, where we're requesting the uh, 60,000 for the facade grant, is coming in at about 193,000. So the exterior is obviously extremely important. There has been a little neglect over the years um, on this property, and we want to do it properly. And um, we are obviously going in a little bit above our heads uh, on this overall cost and. Anything you can help us with, which ultimately that money is going to go towards the structure and the bones of the building to continue this church that was built in 1867 for hopefully another 100 years to come. Tim, I don't know if you have anything else you want to share, but thank you for the time and consideration. I don't know if you did get to see, so it's going to be all new roofs, gutters, paint, and uh, tuck pointing uh, on the buildings. It's going to look totally different. Uh, nice job. 
can, can you guys talk about the use of it a little bit? Just share with them kind of what your vision is of the use. I think that would be helpful as well. Yeah. Just so sure. for their knowledge. Yeah, so the, uh, the Uptown Center, for any of you that have been there for a wedding, that's kind of the, the primary business that I think has been functioning inside of that space since the prior owner, uh, Jim Persifield, bought it, I think around 2007. So the event space is still going to be the uh, primary focus. It will be events. It's going to be events for the community. Weddings are, at this point, um, kind of the primary driver of what we have on the calendar. Um, and a lot of the weddings that we're hosting is Michigan City residents, but we have people coming from Michigan and Illinois as well. So it's a pretty wide demographic um, of residents that are utilizing us. But when we were taking a look at the business, we realized that the calendar utilization rate was very low because they were running one wedding, one wedding a month on a Saturday or every other Saturday. So what we're hoping to accomplish now is more events that are focused on the community. And we mentioned a little bit about the artistic kind of subgroup. We'd love to host art gallery shows that promote. Uh, we discussed potentially having some type of classes for local youth that are interested in painting, photography. And we've reached out to a lot of these um, kind of local community leaders that are in the space on ways we can collaborate and uh, you know really not add only entertainment but also a way to maybe foster growth in the arts. And then ultimately concerts um, that has not really been um, brought into uh, the Uptown Center prior, but we would like to host live music, maybe stand-up comedy, um, and it's going to be primarily just event-driven. So this, we are, we went down a couple different paths. We are not going to be opening up a tavern that's going to create noise ordinances and all the other issues that come with that. Um, but we're hoping that we can really use the space to provide a source of entertainment and collaboration for the community. Did, it, did that help? Or is there anything else? Yeah. What do you have in mind for parking? Uh, we understand that we can make use of the farmer's market area. I'm pretty sure. Is that correct, Trevor? There's some, there's parking, uh, we, we've actually had this discussion. So our ordinance doesn't really specify the reuse of a building that you have to provide parking. But obviously with the type of entertainment they're going to be providing, it'll be an issue, right? So we've discussed the... Um, the use of our, we do have a public parking lot on 8th Street that we built, which is referred to as the goat lot. It has the goat statue on it. You might recall that. That is a public parking space. And actually, the, um, the church lot is public parking when it's not being used by the church. It's actually owned by the city. We have a lease with the church um, to use it on for their events. So, and, and obviously, the farmer's market. You know, we can't use it on Saturdays because we have farmer's market there. But, uh, there's a lot of on-street parking there as well. And then the church behind them actually has a parking lot behind that church, too. There's that They own that, the, the uh, bride, I forget, bridegroom church. So they actually have a parking lot behind that as well. And I'm sure you guys have been collaborating with them to yeah, shared use. So there's some shared use that's going to happen down there, ultimately. Yeah. We've reached out to the churches to try and, and that's how they actually functioned under the prior business, um, Uptown Center did use those adjacent church parking lots to uh, Schuyler's Point when they weren't uh, in, you know, obviously having mass, so that we have been in touch with uh, both churches on either side of us to alleviate some of that bottleneck that could take place if we have a large number of people attending an event. Any other questions for Nick and Tim? No longer. We were originally going to build it out, but we're going to—we're not going to change the use of the building at this phase. So everything is going to remain the same. All the work is structural, and some cosmetic work on the inside. I just have a question for Skyler. Um, for the facade facade program. Is it by address then, or by entity? It must be by address, I'm guessing. Uh, we consider it per building, okay. if that makes sense. So this is actually, it was built, sorry. It was built as two buildings, so we considered it, it actually as a, the breezeway was connected in the two. So we considered it two different buildings when we did this. And 
it does need a significant, I mean, these buildings, they need some help and it was just advantageous to do that too, to, to kind of help them out a little bit as well. Um, but yes, it is too, it was built as two separate buildings back in the day. So yeah, I, I'd say it's by address okay. um, or by parcel if you want to say that. Yeah. And, and then I had a question also uh, for Alan. Oh. If I'm on the Historic Review Board also and approve the COA for this, I'm on the Historic Review Board uh, also and we approve the, uh, the COA for this uh, property, would there be a conflict of interest if I voted on this facade program too? You have a financial interest? No. No conflict. Okay. Thanks. All right. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for consideration. Okay. Any other? Any more questions for Lillian? Thank you, Scott. And my only question is, um, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. President. Um, we talked about estimated cost. Um, on um, both the uh, roof and uh, the total improvements, are, are, do we verify those ahead of time before funding, Skyler? Just as we, a point we of actually reference? have them submit. Uh, they have to submit their bids to okay. us, and we receive those. They're just not in your packet. It would have been a lot sure. to send out. Sure. But uh, Lily and I went through the um, packets. We find them to be in order. We have a checklist. They. they the packet was very nice and neat, and okay. everything was checked off. We were able to check check off everything. Okay. They submitted their bids, plus the bids that uh, did not that they're not going to go with. So we, I guess, it's up to them to vet out the um, the, the the prices that they're going to get, okay. rather than us doing it. But but there is so we make them get bids. Typical most facade programs do that. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So moved. I yes, uh, <laughs> maybe I should be a little bit more specific. Uh, I would approve, uh, or I'd make a motion that we approve the uh, two um, uh, facade grants for um, 907 and 903 Franklin Street. I'll second it. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, F Street demolition. I'm going to speak about this one a little bit. So I know that um, we got asked about this on our Zoom uh, meeting. I mean, I think Ms. Ms. Deitch asked about this last time, and I wanted to get it on here. Uh, the issue with the last time is I didn't know what the price was going to be, what the cost of the demolition was going to be. I do know that now. Um, I don't have a hard number, but I can tell you it won't be over thirty thousand dollars. That's what we're going to ask to approve: is that it can't go over thirty thousand. Um, we think it's going to be about twenty-five grand. It is a bigger house, and it does have a basement underneath it. Uh, Sue is in the process of getting those bids right now. The reason we need to do it, and the reason I'm asking this board, it is in the TIF district. It's uh, located on F Street, um, uh, near the casino. Uh, we have been demolishing ha demolishing houses with funds, with TIF funds uh, before. We've done this before. Um, the other thing I would add is that we're almost at the end of our approval time, meaning that the Board of Works approves a demolition, and we've uh, uh, went ahead and moved forward with uh, uh, as, you know testing and all these things, but we haven't been able to demolish it because we do not have the money. But we're almost out of time. That that time frame is only good for about a year and what well, a year and we're almost at the end of that time frame so we really need to get it down or we'll have to start the whole demolition procedure process over again and that's it, it's a lot of procedural it would probably take us a few months to get it back on the board of works and then all the notices that have to go out to the owners it's just kind of a process so this would help out a whole lot if we could just follow through with the board of works demands or orders so what I was asking for tonight is a not to exceed thirty thousand dollars to take down the house, which we think it's going to be about twenty-one to twenty-five dollars, twenty-five thousand. 
Any questions of Skyler? Skyler, what's the what's the address? Oh, oh, geez, I don't have the address. I can I can get it to you guys tomorrow. That's okay. Oh, just as a yes. it's a point of reference, just it for is a, uh, approval. If you drive over, it is a a large White House on F Street. It's on F Street between uh, yeah. Highway 12 and Union. Union. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much one of the only ones okay. left on that on that street yeah, right there. Yeah. Um, it has become a nuisance. It gets, it gets broke into, or uh, you know, I don't want kids playing in it, and things of that nature. Who's it owned by now, Skyler? I do not know the owner. I do not know the owner. I did not bring any of that with me today. I apologize. Um, the owner has been into the Board of Works a couple of times and been told to fix it, and they haven't. They were given time to fix it. It never got fixed. So that's really why we're here. They affirmed that order, and. That's where we're at right now. The order has been affirmed by the Board of Works. Okay, anything else? Angie, do you know who the owner is? I'm sorry, do you recall? Yep. Yep. I can provide that information if you like. Uh, Just make sure our, we at our next meeting. I don't think it's necessary. Turn down the right building. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll be down by. Then. Someone like to make a motion? Make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, demolition of a property on F Street to be determined. The address to be determined uh, for not to exceed thirty thousand dollars. Motion second that we <clears throat> approve the demolition of the residence on F Street, not to exceed thirty thousand dollars. Any additional discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Community crossings grant. Um, tonight we have uh, our city engineer here with us as well, but you've got the list of. Uh, of community crossings. So community crossings is a grant put out every year by the state. We're eligible for up to one million dollars uh, per community. Uh, am I speaking into it? Can you, can you guys hear me now? Sorry about that. Um, it's a grant put out every year. It's a million dollar grant uh, for each community, um, meaning that we can receive up to a million dollars and um, We've already utilized 250,000 of that million right now uh, with our York Street project uh, that was awarded today. Um, there's two rounds of it, one in February and one in July. And we can only get, um, we can only apply for up to a million even in both rounds. It, it, all, it all has to equal a million. So um, right now, I give my sheet away to Jeff. I think. It's got it's a one for one match. Yes. Grant. So for every dollar we put up, the state kicks in a dollar up to a million. Up to a million, correct. It's a one for one match. Um, I'm gonna have Jeff come up and kind of talk about how he come up with the, uh, I guess the the segments, or if you have questions about the segments that we're looking at. Can I borrow your your spreadsheet real quick? What this grant, what this, what we put together. Is uh, based on the it's based on the Pacer ratings, and so every street in Michigan City has a rating of one to ten, one being the worst, ten being the best. So what we did was we took fours and below, so three to twos, fours, threes, twos, and really try to basically see make sure they're in the TIF boundary. So they had to be in. They had to be in the mapped TIF, TIF areas, meaning the north and the south. Um, and then we literally went out and looked at the ratings and then went out and drove them and uh, assessed them ourselves rather than just taking the rating for what it was. And then that's how we come up with this list. You'll see most of the north TIF is, um, most of our downtown is in pretty good shape, meaning uh, Pine Street, Washington Street, and the cross streets. This north area, though, you'll see around the Chicago, Green, Tennessee, those streets are rated pretty low. They're actually like threes or threes or twos sometimes. Um, what this does is it gets us 
up back up to tens for our downtown so that we can focus on other things. I, and I'm going to let Jeff take it from here because I, I don't want to steal his thunder. I want him to explain Pacer and if you have questions and and more about the segments of what we what we're doing here. I think uh, you were doing just fine, oh, Skyler. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> First of all, I think before I get too far into anything, I'll just uh, apologize for not getting here sooner. I mean, I've been working with the city since, uh, uh, you know, January, and I've been meaning to get over here, but it's a, it's a pretty big town. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of things going on. So, anyway, humblest apology for not getting here sooner. Uh, picking up where uh, Skyler left off. Yeah, Pacer's a rating system for all the city, all the city streets, and uh, uh, again, it's a score from uh, 1 to 10, and uh, it's all on the GIS system that we have, and uh, all the uh, streets and roads are color-coded on that, uh, on the GIS, and we break it down, uh, the ones, twos, and threes are the ones that we really want to hit right away, four, fives, and sixes aren't so bad. Anything after that, we got some time. Um, I am a uh, designer by nature, okay, so I, I design things. Um, when it comes to the management type things, I draw on other resources, <laughs> Skylar being one, uh, uh, Blue Sky, you know, being another one. And uh, so uh, at the first of the year, uh, the mayor put the brakes on uh, construction, like throughout, you know, no new projects because he wanted to get a grip on uh, where we were at financially. And uh, so there was the brakes put on uh, new construction. We did drive the York Street. It was scoring really bad. And if you ever drive, I'm assuming you guys have driven on it, it's, it's a pretty bad. It's right near a school. And so uh, the determination was, yeah, let's submit that one for uh, let's submit that one for part of the Pacer grant, and uh, the profile and the cross section contribute to the safety of the you know in the vicinity of, of driving and being close to a school. You want to maximize every opportunity for you know for safety. So uh, mayor uh, cut loose and. Uh, allowed us to make a submittal uh, for the CCMG for York Street. It's not exactly a dollar for dollar match. They're, they pay for materials and installation of those materials, but there's more to the project than just the materials. There's mobilization, demobilization, there's maintaining, you know, traffic, the engineering, they don't pay anything for like engineering, you know, that kind of thing. And so, uh, it's really close, and I'm I'm uh, understand Skyler shared the spreadsheet with you, uh, showing the uh, segments that we drove and looked at, and uh, primarily the north. But we drove in the south and the east as well. We we went over them all uh, just to get a grasp of what was happening you know, inside the the TIF district per per se. And so uh, the result of all of that is this spreadsheet. And Skyler went and refined it yet one more time to pull out and put on there, uh, to program some years, you know, maybe suggest some years on there when, when we take those on. And so we use that PACER program for, you know, more than just picking, you know, projects. Um, it's a programming tool. It's a management tool. Because each one of those scores, there's associated a type of maintenance that goes along with that score. Yes. If you're scoring a 10, we don't need any maintenance. So the closer to 10, the better off we are. We get up around the ones and the twos, that's the most expensive maintenance that we can do, that we have to perform. And so the goal of those ones and twos, we separated those out into two classes, reconstruction and resurface. Uh, and so the goal uh, this year and even next year, well, I'm sorry, next year and even the year after is to take care of the resurface um, segments, projects. And then that would get us, after we get those kind of taken care of, then we can re 
we can address the uh, the reconstruction projects. We're even even higher dollars than those. Currently, we average about a five. You take all the roads and add them up on the GIS. It'll do it for you, right? Add them up and divide by the number of segments, lane miles, that kind of thing. The average is about five, so we're right in the middle. And uh, one of the things I'm trying to come up with management-wise is uh, the cost of not doing anything. So like if that average slips to a four instead of the five, well that jumps up all of those segments into more, I'm sorry, more and more expensive maintenance management uh, techniques, methodologies. Or you can go the other way. We want to drive it down, you know, to the sixes, sevens. Uh, and so uh, there's a cost of not doing things. And so we're trying to identify what that cost is. The reason I bring that up is because uh, the calls for projects for the uh, CCMG is in the spring, and then there's one supposed to be in July. But I understand they pushed the uh, July call back to September for a variety of reasons, one of them being, you know, the pandemic, reduced uh, gas tax funds, right, to the tune of something to like 40% less than what typically, uh, that, that they typically receive. So I think overall that's kind of, you know, that's kind of the PACER program in a nutshell. You have the list before you. Uh, those are programming costs. They're really kind of close, you know, to what it's probably going to come down. Those are real live uh, asphalt numbers, real live striping numbers, milling numbers, approach numbers. Uh, there, this is the summary sheet. Yes. This is the summary sheet, and then there's a buildup of individual uh, segments that uh, reference. Uh, that are referenced to this sheet from yeah. that. So I, I provided think that's an overall and uh, I did provide them the uh, summary sheets too, just okay. so they could see. Because um, um, Ken asked me, are there is there concrete is there sidewalks involved in this? And the answer is sort of. Uh, the we, answer is yes. Yes, sidewalks there in there yeah. and uh, uh, handicap ramps. If we have to fix one while we're there, we're certainly going to fix it. We're not going to spend a lot of money in one area and leave something un unaddressed like a you know piece of sidewalk that needs to be fixed or a handicap ramp that not there that needs to be there so the answer is yeah there is some sidewalk and con concrete work we can't build so, new sidewalks necessarily but we can repair sidewalks and we can we can't it. yes it's correct we can't issue like a sidewalk contract with CCMG it has to be like germane you know to the theater of, you know of the projects so let me jump in there so right now the number of projects that you're seeing here are the ones that had the pacer rating um so they're in bad shape um they're within the tiff so you can see the respective tiffs that they're in uh, the South Tiff's actually in decent shape. We've been doing some work down there. We're actually doing last year's CCMG. We're completing it right now. Um, so it's actually not that bad. Myers was was the worst, was the lowest rated street down there right now. Um, so when you say Myers, are you saying that service drive in front of Myers all the way down to the end? All the way Jordan? to where Tim cuts across? Yes. Okay. Yes. We That's actually a street that we own. Okay. Um, so what we've what we've put together here, uh, total the total of this is about three hundred ninety nine thousand um, dollars. I, I don't know where we're where I'll leave it at that. But that's the kind of the 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 max of all of this. I don't know what's um, pal. You know, how much did you say? Three hundred and, and this is about we're looking at five million. Five. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, five hundred ninety nine thousand dollars. I'm so sorry. Six hundred. Yeah, about six hundred thousand. We're eligible for up to seven fifty, but um, you know, that's that's what we have to work with right now is, is seven fifty. This gets all the streets into the this this above the three category. Doesn't it? This gets our these streets that you're seeing here. This puts them back 
at a 10. A within nine or 10. Tip. Yeah, within the within tip. tip. That's not all right, the streets right. in Michigan. Yeah. No, but I mean all the ones that are eligible for us to fund. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a question. And was it um, Liberty Drive that was done last year? We did. Uh, we did uh, Washington Park Boulevard last year, and I believe, and, and Liberty. Liberty Trail, and I thought the two side streets were going to be repaved during that time. Um, I don't know. I don't remember those being part of the CCMG. Yeah. They might have been done by the city. I don't remember them being CCMG, though. Okay. I have a question. Um, so, Skylar, so for community crossings, it only can be within the TIF district? No, no, our money can only be spent within our TIFs. Right, but for the actual grant... It can be spent anywhere in the city. You can go for money anywhere in the city. So if the city wanted to put money, say... Um, I can't think of somewhere. I'm, I'm losing, you know, lost for where something outside that something outside of a TIF area. Well, I'm thinking over cool by spring. trying... Let's say, let's say well, cool. let me give you an example of one. Like over there off of Tryon Road, that road that's never been done. Correct. That one. They could apply, but it would have to be city funds to do it. Okay. Correct. 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 Our TIF dollars can't be used over there. Right. But I just want to make sure, because it came across like you can only use the, the community crossings grant that way. No, no. I want to be clear. Community crossings is eligible for anywhere within a municipal boundary. The only reason why we have these before you today is right. because these are the ones that are eligible within the TIF. Yep. I just want to make sure the public know. Thank you. The idea was since the city's kind of strapped for funds right now, we still aren't, we didn't want to let the grant <clears throat> go by because <clears throat> it's free. It's basically free money. So uh, on top of that, I would just throw in there that uh, you wouldn't be paying anything for the engineering on the jobs. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> we would, the city would pony that up, you know, for you. I might, I might add that uh, the benefit uh, Mr. Wright brings us is he saves us the 20% overhead for most of this, which I think is in the ballpark of about $300,000 or so once we started looking at the numbers. If you committed to the whole thing, it would come down around there. Anything else? I mean, are we gonna? No, let's just do this. Okay. Someone like to make a motion? I'd like to make the motion um, to uh, fund the um, community crossing grant program um, paving. Um, I guess not to exceed 600000 It's cutting it close. I don't know. Uh, I believe you had said up to 750 What the funds Well, I guess that's left. a question. Well, uh, yeah. <clears throat> it, that's what we're eligible for, but if we want to just do what's here. For the 599 Yeah, I mean, we're what trying to just... Why don't we just state the Projects. segments that are listed on this? Okay. Yeah, so um, I guess what I can um, amend my motion to uh, fund the uh, paving uh, for the uh, Community Crossing Grant Program uh, for the projects stated um, as presented as in our packet. Okay. Second that motion. There's a motion a second that we fund the community crossings grant based on the segments presented in the packet. Any additional discussion? Here's just, none be, just, to, just to be clear on that, though, Chris, you're saying five hundred ninety-nine thousand eight dollars and eighty-two cents. Well, I guess I'm, I'm I'm assuming that we got that those were bids that we received on this, Skyler. So these are, these would be our estimates. Our engineered estimates. Jeff, may I ask for um, a suggestion? I mean, are, are those pretty firm estimates, or do we need to approve like a not to exceed, like like six fifty, not to exceed six fifty or six twenty five? 
I think uh, estimates are just that they could come in a little high, they can come in a little low. I can't. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you that uh, Meyer, 1,495 feet, is going to be 125,000 and 27 dollars. I can't get it that yeah. exact. Yeah. They're close. They're budget numbers. They're management numbers. Uh, I. I guess if I had to make a recommendation, I would, I'm kind of the penny pincher, I would approve this up to at least the $600,000 okay. number, and if it was 20000 more or 20000 less, we come back and fix it at that time. I think that's, is that, is that reasonable? To so do you need to amend the... No. Motion is, is stated. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay. I think it's fine the way it is. And you're more than welcome to just bury it in money. I'll spend it for you. <laughs> all right. Any additional discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, so I'll move on to the next. Uh, item here because it's kind of in tandem to this so you heard mr. Uh, Wright talk about he is really good at drawing uh, that's what he does and he saves us quite a bit of money um, he saved us money on the York Street project and he saved us money on our CCMG projects as you can see he's already got the segments put together um, he also will be doing the inspections so we don't have to pay for that overhead as well but what he is asking for and what I think is a pretty good spend for the money is these all have to be submitted to the state and in a timely manner and they have to be drawn down at the end and resubmitted for uh, reimbursement and, and for the money and to make sure that we did the project to say we did the project so what he's asking for is that we approve a contract with it's called blue sky development the man who's in uh, in charge of it, his name is Danny Corbin he actually was an engineer and he's very familiar with the NDOT process and he's actually helped us put together the five-year pavement plan, pavement improvement plan uh, that we worked on right at the first of the year. And he's asking for a not to exceed uh, of $10,000. I do have his contract. I just got it today. So I, did, I literally just printed it out and brought it. Um, but I feel like if we can save money having Mr. Wright um, do the drawings for us and provide that service that inspection service and if he because if he doesn't have to do the actual submittals and drawdowns that's that's a pretty good that's a pretty good service and a help out to him as well and to me because i'm not too sh sure how to do the submit i've never done the submittals for community uh crossings if, uh, as well or the drawdowns for him so um that's what we're asking for with this i have the agreement here but if it pleases the commission um, I would look for like an approval of not to exceed he's asking for 10 grand not to exceed 10 grand but pending uh, attorney Cyrenax review of this document just to make sure that it has all the right language in it just simple similar to other contracts that we do Again, the services he would be providing would be in the TIF, and it would be the submittals of all our CCMGs and the draw and the in the uh, the actual uh, closeouts for those as well as what they're called. They're not drawdowns; they're called closeout documents, and those go to the state. And as I understand, Mr. Corman is very experienced in this. Absolutely, um, he was an NDOT engineer for many years, and he's a planner also by trade. Yeah, I, I have no. No doubt, and he, he's very versed in both NERPSI's funding sources and their uh, approval, kind of how it all works, their process, and he's very fluid with the community crossing grant as well. Would you agree with that, Mr. Wright? Okay, anything else, Skyler, on the contract? Right, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, not to exceed ten thousand dollars for Mr. Corbin to do the uh, grant submittal for the community crossing grant. Subject to approval. 
subject to approval of the uh, contract. Second. Okay. There's a motion and a second that we <coughs> approve the contract with Mr. Corbin not to exceed ten thousand dollars subject to the approval of council. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, the double track betterments. Thanks for your patience, Joel. We yeah, we do have Mr. Joel Baldwin with us tonight. Um, he's from Hitchcock Design. I'll just give him a quick introduction for him. Um, Joel has been with uh, working with the city for I don't know five, six years, seven. Pro no, before even, before even that, years. Um, the reason I've asked him to come tonight is because he actually started this project with us, and um, we started two years ago with this. Three years ago. Three years ago. It's been a long it's been a while and these are the betterments he actually drew these betterments they they designed the betterments and come up with the ideas for this and I really wanted him to be the one to present it to you to go through that and express why they did certain things that they did and why they drew them the way that they do and depict them the way they do um, so anyways I'll hand it over to Joel thanks Skylar thanks board for letting me come in tonight I'm gonna try to do it with my mask on but it seems to get warm so um, as Skyler mentioned, we were engaged about three years ago. Um, the city asked us to take a look at the phase one plans that were developed by NICTI um, and review them and look at ways to make the, the aesthetics of the project better. Um, you've heard a lot about this betterments. Um, but what can we do to make this project that's going to be very impactful to the city um, in many different ways? Um, but we're going from a single track that's running down 10th and 11th to a double track that's either off street on 10th or running down the middle of the street on 11th. Um, not only just a railroad track anymore, it now will include, you know, catenary columns, uh, concrete guardrails, chain link fencing, um, and so on. So it, it's uh, pretty impactful and so we looked at different ways of beautifying the project. Um, there's only so much you could do but we did come up with some number of different things that we could consider. Now obviously a lot has changed in the past three years um, so a lot of what I'm going to show you doesn't really you know, matter anymore but this was a good starting point Skylar and I thought to sort of start this discussion about the betterments. I've got about 30 slides. Um, a lot of them will just, I think, get us in the frame of mind of the double track, but it's really the last <laughs> slide that that I hope will generate some discussion. And and uh, when we get there, too, I'm being pretty forward with some of my recommendations um, because time is important. Um, uh, the construction documents are being developed for this project as we speak. Just everyone knows too we are on that team we are on the AE com team for the project but 90 percent construction documents are due at the end of the month um, so it's 90 percent construction documents specifications and cost estimates so it's um, pretty important that if the city wants to make any improvements to um, the existing plans then that needs to occur pretty quickly in the next two to three weeks so back three years ago when we started this project, we identified some objectives. Um, it, it kind of was looking at, you know, we know there's lots of streets being closed. We're going to have cul-de-sac roadway closures and related landscaping along 10th Street um, and 11th Street. What can we do to improve it? You know, landscaping and streetscape improvements along 11th and the area of the 11th Street station and the platforms really became the main focus of the project. And I'll talk about that as we go through here. Um, I think we all know where the project is, but it goes from, uh, my glasses on, I can't, is it, what's the street on the far west? Um, sure. Yeah, it goes from Sheridan to Michigan, um, and it gets, you know, adjusted, so it's, it's uh, removed from 10th Street and is going to be located on the south side of 10th Street, um, basically to the Amtrak lines in Chicago Street, and then from there it's going to be a double track down the middle of 11th Street. It's sort of a couple curves that are there get readjusted and realigned a little bit. Uh, this is the existing section of 10th Street. 
Um, you know, as we know, the rail runs down the middle of the street. This is the proposed section. So the homes along the south side of the street will be removed and the tr double track will be located in that area. Um, and the minimal improvements happen to 10th Street. This is the existing section of 11th Street looking east from Manhattan. Again, it runs down the middle of the street. These are the proposed improvements. Um, sidewalk along the north end of the street, uh, double track rail, and then a 13-foot uh, drive lane, a um, little bit of parkway and a little bit of sidewalk. So that's sort of the typical section. There is one mistake on this section. I do want to point it out because this isn't accurate anymore. There is, I don't know if this has a laser pointer, but on the left side, we're showing a concrete guardrail with a fence on top. Um, on the north side of the double track, it's not a concrete guardrail, it's just a fence. So, um, so this is the proposed section. It's a, it's a fencing along the north end, concrete guardrail on the south end with some sort of uh, fencing on top of that. Um, in some areas, there is on-street parking. So there's still have along the south end a 13-foot drive lane. Then you have a parking lane. Then you have a minimal three-foot wide concrete sidewalk. Uh, we, you know, as designers, as you know, landscape architects, we started looking at the existing city, what we call city textures, just a lot of different elements throughout the corridor, throughout the downtown, things that we like, things that we get inspired by. So if it's different pavement or architecture or brick patterns, uh, but different things throughout the corridor that, that helped develop our design. Uh, we looked at some of the existing materials and furnishings. Um, the city's been working for years on improving the downtown and has a standard light pole and standard stop signs and um, using different red brick in different areas, uh, different fencing and brick columns, street signs. But looking at all those elements um, and bringing them into this corridor and how we can incorporate them. We looked at, you know, we took all the photos, we kind of put it on a board. These are really, again, the existing elements, everything from the uh, decorative street light to the ped light to the signs again, to historic signs and benches, trash receptacles, fencing columns, different walls. You know, this is the family of stuff that you see in, in downtown Michigan City right now. Uh, we started to think about what this could look like. We, we started pulling some comps for different architecture. Um, kind of wanted, you know, an old historic industrial theme. We wanted to build on some of those buildings that are here today and kind of look at bringing some of those architectural elements into the proposed improvements. This is the family of site furnishings that we developed. Um, it looks very similar to everything on the left because, again, we didn't want to change the lights. If we're going to put new lights in, we want to propose existing lights, existing stop signs, benches, trash receptacles. Uh, the item in the middle is pretty important, um, and I think we'll discuss that more here at the end of the show, but that is the, the concrete guardrail. Instead of your typical concrete you know, guardrail that you would, you would see along here, we propose taking that guardrail and doing a brick form line around it, making it more decorative. Instead of a chain link fence on top, putting a more decorative ornamental rail on top, kind of tying back to some of those architectural images that we were showing earlier. We are looking at breaking up that guardrail with some columns, uh, with some lights on it occasionally. Um, I think that probably has gone away. Uh, the next set of drawings there is looking at some street planners. Um, instead of having uh, landscape planners in the streetscape with just a concrete curve, doing more of a decorative curve, having uh, little uh, brick seating walls, again, having a decorative railing on top of that curve. And then the last two are ornamental fence. Uh, we weren't getting carried away with this, but instead of a chain link fence, looking at you know some standard ornamental fencing that you see throughout the downtown in some selected areas, and then along 10th Street, the chain link fence had a black PVC coated chain link fence kind of a step above. So this is kind of the family that was developed when we developed this report. Again, just some images of what those elements look like from the lights, the stop sign, to the trash receptacles, to the pavement types. Um, to bollards that are already being used on Wabash, to fencing that's being used downtown, uh, the planter railing and ornamental railing is an image of what that could look like, to the black PVC coated fence, bike racks, benches, and so on. 
So really working with the elements that are here today, bringing those into uh, 10th and 11th as much as possible um, instead of the elements that are being proposed. Um, so just kind of a big overview of things that we've looked at. I'm not going to show everything today. I'm really more focused on the, on the transit block. Um, but just things that are sort of driving our design. Again, um, we're not proposing to do all this because I don't think there's money to do all this stuff and just in overall things have changed in the project. But we know where we have proposed street crossings, so we wanted to study those. Uh, we looked at making gateways or gathering spaces, um, really making some improvements along the corridor. Um, and at that Chicago Street Amtrak, 11th, 10th intersection where everything's sort of coming together, um, looking at beautifying that space, um, uh, looking at removing some additional pavement that Nikki's not proposing to remove and really beautifying it with, with landscape. Um, right downtown at Franklin and 11th, we were looking at doing a, a little plaza and, and I think there's still possible plans to do that today. Um, and then a couple other opportunities further east, just doing some, minor gateways and plaza improvements. We looked at gateways and where those could be, if it's signage or sculpture or artwork or different things, um, where would those be located? Um, we looked at you know, enhancing the streetscape. Uh, instead of just concrete sidewalk and grass parkway and trees, you know, really enhancing the streetscape with, with brick pavers, not only in the intersections, but sometimes in the streets. Uh, lots of times on the sidewalks, uh, making sure we're getting the decorative lighting, making sure we're getting decorative planners and railing, site furniture, but really basically around the garage block, around that main block of 10th, Franklin and Pine and 11th, kind of radiating out from there two blocks east and west. So that area in the blue is kind of the area of, the, of really special <coughs> areas. So zooming in even more, these are some of the in, in, in plans that we came up with. Uh, this is down at uh, Wabash, um, maintaining the intersection improvements that are there today, so the intersection would be enhanced, um, and kind of going east from there with what we call an art walk, but having an enhanced streetscape um, along that narrow streetscape there, um, carrying that streetscape all the way to Washington, and then when we get to Washington again, we'd have an enhanced intersection and then both sides of the street would be uh, very enhanced. Um, the narrow drive lane between Washington and Pine actually would be enhanced with pavers. Um, we were thinking about it as a complete street, um, uh, less of a driving lane, but more of a pedestrian oriented space. You can still drive through there, but it makes it a lot more comfortable for pedestrians and bicyclists and so on, since that sidewalk's gonna be very narrow too. Um, on the north end of the street, we were looking at a uh, little opportunity for a pocket park on that southwest corner of Franklin and 11th. Uh, the, the station configuration is, is different now, but um, then it came all the way to Franklin, but we were looking at the enhanced streetscape all around the station. Um, continuing east, that streetscape would go around the station, and then the parking lot between the station and the platform all of that would be enhanced. That would all be special pavers and as much landscape as possible and having some gateways through there, um, really making that, uh, that, that space between or around the platform as, as nice as possible. Um, quick little section on the parking lot and the station. This, this is still true today and how the parking lot and the station are gonna be related. Um, Continuing further east, a lot of this doesn't matter anymore. These parking lot improvements aren't happening, um, but still looking at uh, improving York Street, but just carrying uh, you know, concrete sidewalk and street trees and a couple gateways further east. Uh, these are just some concepts of what we were, we were thinking about for improvements around the station, along the drive lane south of the, of the, of the rail, uh, where we are we were looking at improving the streets as much as possible. Uh, just some gateway items. Uh, some of this may look familiar to some of you. These are these are images and things that have been bounced around for years and, and some of the different reports that have been generated for the city. But just looking at different ways of, again, beautifying uh, this project 
um, that's going to you know run through the city. This is what we came with for next steps. And these are my next steps. You know, you know Skylake just asked us to come here, and I kind of put this together very quickly today. Like I said, I may be a little too forward with some of the things, but time is of, a, of essence. Um, like I said, the engineering team is in the progress of developing 90% construction documents. They're due at the end of, end of July. Um, so if the city elects to move forward with some betterments, we need to determine what those betterments are uh, pretty quickly. Um, a lot of the betterments are, are, are fairly simple to document. Um, if taking the concrete guardrail and putting a form liner on it, changing a fence type, you know, it's, it's fairly, it's things that we could um, put together pretty quick. Um, but we won't have the opportunity to meet once a month to do that. So, you know, is there an opportunity to put a committee together? Um, is it, you know, Skyler, a member of redevelopment? Is it the mayor? Is it, you know, someone? But is there a way to make some decisions quickly on what some of these betterments could be so we could get them documented? Obviously, funding would have to be approved. Uh, probably the biggest thing. Um, uh, but Nick D or South Shore is asking for a memorandum of agreement between the city and the South Shore line, outlining the expectations and the cost responsibility. They're asking for that to be in place by the end of the month. Um, but five and six are things that I thought we could start some discussion on. Uh, five is really things that it's hardscape. It's stuff that has to be, if, if you want to improve it, it's got to be built as part of the NICD um, project, part of the South Shore Line project. Um, and that's improving the Wabash, Washington, and Franklin intersections, improving the York Street cul-de-sac, installing the ornamental fence along the north side of the double track and place a chain link fence, installing ornamental fence on top of the guardrail and place a chain link fence, improving the concrete guardrail with brick form liner, Installing special paving around the parking garage, installing special curb and decorative railings and planters along 10th north of the garage. Number six are things that could happen in the future. You know, it's it's installing trees. It's coming in after the project has been completed and making improvements. Now, the first one is that 40-foot setback between Franklin and the garage. You all know that the garage is being set back 40 feet for future development. Um, when that development may occur, I don't know, it could be next year, I, it could be 10 years from now, I don't know, but meanwhile, it may make some sense to do some improvements in that area instead of just lawn, which is what's being proposed today. Um, installing additional trees throughout the corridor. Installing landscape improvements at the end of all the new cul-de-sacs. Um, right now, it's going to be new, new cul-de-sac with the guardrail and then sidewalk and the double track. Um, looking at doing additional improvements, improving that guardrail, um, looking at more decorative bollards, fencing, walls, rain gardens, um, but really improving those, those new cul-de-sacs, which are, again, gonna be impactful to the neighborhood. Uh, improve the intersection around Chicago, Amtrak, and the double track, that, that big triangle area that I pointed out earlier, looking at improving that, uh, that overall area. And then just consider art banners, gateways, et cetera, you know, within the corridor, things that could be easily added after the project. Um, that's where we're at. Um, you know, I think Skylar just wanted to start the discussion today, um, get everyone's thoughts and comments, and um, we'll go from there. Is that July 31st? Is that a hard deadline? Or did Nicole say? We, we, we need to get the list of, let's say, the number five things. Those are things that are engineered at the same time, like a form liner is engineered. But if we elect not to have a form liner, it's just going to be uh, smooth concrete. You know, It's not going to be stamped. So those are things that we need to get to them. Probably, we need to get them by the end of the month to them, but I did ask her today, we can sign the MOU or the MOA. We're okay with our August meeting. She's okay with that. But we do need to get the list to them because they're drafting the MOA, and then we need to go back and forth with the language that's in that MOA as well, time to, to review that as well. So 
Sooner the better, I would say. Um, and everything is being documented. Yeah. So you get past that date and they're gonna, yeah. you know, it's past 90% construction documents. Yeah. So, so where's the cost of those items falling? The cost of the engineering for things that we choose would be engineered by them at this time. So say we want to come back and put some type of hardscape in later, then it's on us to engineer it into that. Okay, right. so if, if we want ornamental fence along the north side of double track in place of a chain link, who's paying for that? Those are betterments, those are on us. So we, so we don't have any idea what that would cost? We've done some preliminary <clears throat> estimates on that. AECOM did them. Um, I've had Joel look at those. Um, I, I don't know what to say about them. They're, um, it depends on it depends on how far out we want to go and what those improvements are. Or do they go the whole distance of the corridor? Do they go? Do we change them up and they go halfway? And then once you get toward the end, toward the middle, they change. Um, you know, the, what I would recommend is just you know within the week to really come up with the group's thoughts on what you want to improve if you would like to move forward with improving something. While that's happening, we could crunch the numbers, look at options. You know, if it's this fence, it's this much money, it's this fence. You know, start working with all of you to figure out how to spend whatever amount of money you elect to spend. I don't have the answers for you today. Um, I don't think anyone does on, on what it is, but what I'd like to ask is what's important to you so we could go back very quickly and start thinking about those items and starting putting, you know, pen to paper and cost estimates to improve this. Well, we, we did some preliminary work on that, didn't we? We did. We, I mean, I, you know, we have some preliminary numbers. I would say they're very preliminary, but they're simple, you know, form liners, decorative fencing. We haven't chose the style of fence. You know, we haven't chose what we want. They're They're just rough numbers and I believe they were at like 1.6 mil yeah. for those, 1.6 million. <laughs> but what Joel's getting at is we haven't chose the fence, we're just saying a decorative fence. We don't know what it looks like, we haven't chose the style, we haven't decided what the form liner is. Is it brick, is it stone, what, what is it, what, what, is that, what is that form liner? There's all different kinds. So we have about three weeks to work on this? We do. And so, Skyler, from the, um, from the standpoint. fiduciary standpoint, mm -hmm. is where I'm going. I, I'm, I'm trying to put my arms around. We're going to enter into some memorandum that will then have Joel go back, crunch some numbers for us after we give them some directive. And then, from our perspective, when that comes back, are we modifying or changing? And what's that dollar amount and where does it come from? I think what we would do is. So they're going to design this one way or the other. Say say they put, say we put in a form liner, and in the end we don't have the money and we don't do the form liner. It they'll just go back to the original base, okay, and it'll be straight smooth concrete okay. through there. I'm told that we don't have to have our funding mm -hmm. in place until the end of the year. So it gives us that long to get funding and, and pare down what we're trying to do, but we do need to provide them a list of things that we do want Directive. to consider in, in this improvement. Um, which obviously we've got a pretty good start on that, you know, like decorative fencing, form liner, we want it to be brick, you know, okay. or, or maybe do we, want, do we want it to be stone at this point, you know, but, but we really need to really be get, start getting more specific on what that, what does it look like? Like okay. what actually? The, instead of just saying decorative fencing, you know, we have gotcha. a specific decorative fencing because um, that's going to change the price, obviously. You know. Okay. So, and that's something we haven't really boiled down yet. So. Well, I would suggest we set up a committee and meet with the mayor's office and come up with uh, some ideas and in consultation with Joel. Based on, uh, we do have preliminary cost estimates, don't we? 
Those are done by AE Calm. Uh, again, those are just simply saying steel powder coated decorative fencing. Do you know what I mean? It isn't like a. It, can we have some preliminary costs from this report? Right. Um, AE Calm kind of looked at some things. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know what we did three years ago has changed. Um, it, I mean, we have that. I mean, between. You know, all the engineering team, we could come up with pretty good estimates on what some of these things are going to cost. Uh, we just need to know what, what, what you want us to look at. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, really what the budget is. So, and, and that kind of goes hand in hand. You may not know what the budget is yet until you start to see some of the costs. Right. Um, but we just, those discussions need to happen. And I think they could happen pretty quickly. Um, if they happen within the week, and then we could turn around and get some of this stuff documented, hopefully pretty quickly, uh, to meet the deadline for the end of the month. All right. So. Okay, would anybody like to serve on this committee? I'll do it. John? All right. Well, we, John and Chris, and that's all we can have, right? Yes. And yeah, myself, but do we? Skyler. Yeah, and the mayor. And the mayor. And the mayor. So the committee is going to be me, mayor, you, uh, Ms. Mr. Chatfield, and Mr. Hendricks. To discuss the betterments and work with Mr. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Um, I, I, Joel, do you have anything else to no, add? No, no, no. Um, I'll be in contact with you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Joel. Thank you. Okay, next item is to adjust the salary order. Um, this is just um, from what we discussed in our executive session, just, just a simple uh, adjustment the, uh, within our current budget. Um, so the money's there, it's just a, an adjustment to, to uh, provide for a program manager for our facade grant and our upper story residential program. Is that is that what's in the red, the downtown? Yes, it okay. most certainly Thank is. Thank you. Okay. Someone would like to make a motion on that? Motion second that we approve the salary adjustment as presented. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Report by legal counsel. <coughs> Excuse me. A couple of things. Um, first, the uh, commission met in executive session immediately preceding this meeting. Uh, any items, those items discussed were items consistent with the open door law. No decisions were made. Do we uh, include the special meeting too? Say it again. The special executive we had? The special executive meeting we had? Did you board the meeting today? No. The one we had on uh, uh, a couple weeks ago. Oh, a couple probably, weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was also a meeting held. Oh, I forgot about that. Um, when was it? Uh, Two weeks ago. June 29th, yeah, 29th. yes. Yep. Um, there was also a, uh, another executive committee held on, uh, another executive session held on June 29th, and again, no items were discussed at that meeting, and no decisions were made. Uh, no items inconsistent with the open door law were discussed, and no decisions were made. Second thing, um, 
is more of just a housekeeping thing. I sent you a email um, yesterday, I believe. Um, the um, in 2019, that commission approved a project, a $3.8 million project for the demolition of the existing building at the Bond, uh, Bozak Honda dealership on uh, Highway 20 uh, and, uh, uh, and then included also a, a, re or a building of a new or construction of a new building at that site that was more technology friendly, that was a bigger building, that was also accommodated more staff. Uh, also allowed more technology uh, employees there. Um, Michigan City's cost on that, or the Redevelopment Commission's cost on that, was 380000 That project was completed in May. Uh, so what we have, or what I've submitted, would ask for your approval tonight, is the Certificate of Final Completion uh, for that project. Um, you see that that's been indicated or executed by the uh, contractor. Uh, for the uh, project manager, which was Larson Danielson. Uh, and then, in a, well, that would be the first order, is to approve the certificate of final completion. You're looking for a motion? Yes. Make a motion that we approve. There's a motion and a second that we uh, approve the order of final completion on the Bozak project. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The other part of that project, uh, the statute requires any kind of use of redevelopment commission funds for a, in a private part, uh, private public partnership, uh, that we also need to acquire a thing, uh, the best way I can say it, that we, we acquire a certain aspect or a certain uh, particular aspect of a, uh, whether it be a property, whether it be a building, whether it be depending upon the thing that we're working on. Uh, in that particular uh, um, uh, project, we acquired a part of our part ownership in the property itself. Um, so we have an ownership interest in the Bozak property for the purpose of doing work on it. We are now at the point of where we're done with the project, so therefore we need to have a termination of the license agreement so we no longer have an ownership interest in the property that which Bozak Honda sits on. So we have not gotten an executed copy back yet from Bozak, but I would expect I'd have talked with uh, our contact person was Pat Reardon. Um, he thought he'd get that signed. He thought he was going to get it signed today. If it's not today, it'll be sometime tomorrow or that. Would ask your approval for Ken then to uh, execute on behalf of the commission uh, to terminate that license agreement. Make a motion to uh, terminate the license agreement with Bozak. Motion and a second that we terminate the licensing agreement with Bozak. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The last thing has to do with kind of an update on the station block and the property appraisals for those parcels on the station block, which is defined as, <coughs> excuse me, Franklin and Pine and 11th and 10th. Um, so those are the parcels that we are responsible for uh, in terms of making them uh, available for conveyance to um, NICD, hopefully sometime between now and the end of the year. That Those are kind of the target dates that we're shooting for. Um, we have done environmental studies on the project. We have identified what the parcels are. We have to do all of this consistent with the um, Federal Relocation Act because there's federal dollars involved in this. Consequently, there are specialized um, appraisers that we have to use that are familiar with what the requirements are for the uh, Federal Relocation Act. Uh, appraisals have been done um, for all, they're all total, there are nine parcels on that station block, seven well, counting the billboard, eight different parcels have to be appraised. The, part of the billboard is not anything of great concern. The other seven parcels, um, um, there have been appraisals done. We received the initial uh, appraisals, and uh, in my opinion, they did not meet the requirements uh, uh, for those appraisals under federal law, uh, as well as what their regulations are. Uh, so we had a meeting with them. 
a couple of weeks ago, five of the six parcels, or five of the six appraisals, merely needed a, a what I required, a uh, reference and an analysis in comparison to knowledge of potential environmental contamination on the parcels and the overall appraised value. Under federal law, all parcels have to be evaluated, have a phase one environmental evaluation. The jump off point when you're doing the appraisals is that the phase one is concluded that there's no phase two necessary. That's really all you need and there's a minimal involvement then as it relates to uh, the appraised value. For one of the parcels, it had been a prior IDEM site and the federal regulations or the federal guidelines say that there needs to be some reference to what's called environmental stigma because of the fact that it was a prior uh, IDEM or Department of Environmental Cl uh, Management cleanup uh, work site. So I asked them to specifically identify that on the one parcel and as for the other, um, that just there was some notation that in the contiguous area there has been some environmental concerns and they're aware of that but again they've concluded that it has no impact on the appraised value on all those. So uh, based on that, based on that review, uh, Skylar has signed off on that and they've been sent then to the appraisers to the next step of that would be then to actually negotiate the sale uh, of those parcels but it's contingent upon this board approving it. Uh, any sale of property, we have to approve it. So uh, there'll be uh, qualified offers made to those parcel owners. The last one, though, is the 1002 Franklin Street, which we know to be an uh, IDEM site. Uh, we know it because we called it in um, a couple of years ago. Uh, there is uh, management going on. There is, um, it is it is investigation going on at this point, and we also have identified uh, potential polluters uh, of that property, prior landowners um, who have polluted that property, and 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 there's discussion going on with them as well. Uh, however, the appraisal itself, despite the request again that's saying that we need to address this better, did not in my opinion, um, do that um, for a variety of reasons. Um, but not the least of which is, is the fact that, that one of the uh, standard lines in any appraisal are certain assumptions that are being made, one of which is the assumption is that buyers and sellers are aware of all of information available to them as it relates to a particular parcel and that based on this information they're going to act in their best interest. And my feeling was is that based on that assumption and based on the appraised value that they came up with um, and based on the fact that there's an ongoing IDEM contamination site right now um, in which tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars may end up being expended uh, for for cleanup of that site depending upon what they find in the investigation. Uh, we know to date uh, IDEM has spent over $30,000 in investigation of the site uh, and we know uh, by as a matter of Indiana statute and Indiana regulation that when we talk about paying for cleaning up that site we know at this point there's at least $30,000 price tag that somebody is going to have to reimburse IDEM on. So, um, I again believe that those things uh, need to be, should be addressed when making an analysis as to the, um, uh, the appraised value of the property. Having said that, I also get the feeling that when I'm dealing with these people, um, we're getting somewhat conflictual with each other. Um, and maybe somewhat is an understatement. Um, but uh, so the question just comes down I guess and I'm seeking guidance from you guys is if we can just go with what their appraised value is right now uh, or is it beating a dead horse to continue to drive this point home further and I guess the thing that I'm most mindful of is the fact that at this point in time those appraisals and dollars amounts are so associated with those are not public information and will not become public information until you guys sign off on the actual acquisition of the 1002 Franklin property and if anybody who has looked at those things uh, closely or even 
peripherally, like uh, you're going to look at this, like, well, you're going to scratch your head. And I'm not saying that the price that they have appraised it at is absolutely wrong, because I don't know. I mean, I'm not an appraiser. But I am saying that the appraised value that they've come up with and the analysis that has derived for that concluding number, in my mind, does not match. It is consistent with federal law now. I'm okay with that. It's just it gets down to a pragmatic thing. You know, it's how far do you want me to take it with them? I, I, my feeling is at this point that absent any further discussion with them, you know, it, 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 to purchase the property at the price that they've appraised it at, absent any further comment, we look like a bunch of idiots. Um, getting back to what the assumption is, that if you're doing this within your best interest, knowledgeable of these facts, is this what you would pay for this? And, and, if, you, and, if, and if the answer to that is yes, then I, then I think say, I think it makes us look like a bunch of idiots, because that would not be what a responsible person acting in their best interest would do. But, you know, how much more can I knock them down on that, or how much more for discussion? Maybe it doesn't change the appraised value at all, and all we're talking about is inserting different language within the report itself, so it seems to make, you know, so it seems to be more sensical and more logical in terms of what they've come up with. You know, that, that's kind of what my recommendation would be individually, and that's what my recommendation is that I'm recommending to you. But I also want it understood is the fact that I think they're pretty tired of me, and I, and I think they're, they're pretty annoyed with me, and I sure don't want to be an adverse re reflection of Michigan City or this commission. So I got no problem being a jerk. I, you know, I do that as that's part of my job. It's in my job description in my private practice. But, you know, but my clients always know when I'm doing that. So I'm advising my clients now that, I, that I, this is where we are with this particular appraisal. We can sign off on it. Well, we can push them further for more logical language within the report and a possibility of reduced appraised value. Okay, anybody like to... Yes, Mr. Schoenig, so I, I guess I'd like to ask a couple questions. Uh, obviously, this is a piece of property that we uh, are in need of. Yes. Um, the appraised value and what we think is potential remediation on that property is uh, there's a substantial difference yes. in, in those two numbers. Um, obviously, uh, if um, you know, based on the fact that we are in need of this property, um, I, th I think my my tenor of this would be that we at least have a you have a discussion with them that they need to have some addendum or some uh, asterisk with respect to that potential uh, cost, because that's going to come to us to fix. It's not going to be someone else. And that there's an, potentially a negative um, a, 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 be, because of the, the, the appraised value and what the remediation would be, it's a negative. We're obviously not going to um, have them pay us to take the property. So I think I'd, I'd like us to be able to have at least something in the appraisal that would um, uh, notate the, the remediation cost so that we can take that back to the seller and that can be part of our, our bargaining chip with respect to the, the purchase. Let me also remind you, though, Chris, that the, yes, there are um, substantial environmental cleanup costs that we're going to be responsible for. One of the things that you noticed in the um, uh, claims docket was the uh, fee to Plu, Shadley, Razor, and Ron mm -hmm. for work being done on the 1002 Franklin property. Um, as we did with the Trail Creek properties, um, uh, those folks are also doing, at this point, investigation. We've identified who the sources are, we've identified sure. who the principal polluters are, and we've identified what the actual contaminants are in the ground. You know, part of environmental uh, litigation, though, is the fact that uh, yeah, we'll pay for cleaning it up just because we're forced by the timeliness of it. There's no question about that. Um, and, and everything I'm talking about has nothing to do with, with what that cost is going to be. It's more from the viewpoint of how much money are we going to spend to acquire the property, knowing full well that we're going to end up having to clean it up, but then we're going to go back to the principal polluters, and again, like we did on the Trail Creek litigation right. last year, 
you know, seek to have reimbursement for us for those cleanup costs. Yeah, you beat me to you beat me to the punch. That was my next comment. Is yeah. that I think there there probably is some opportunity for us in in the future to maybe um, regain some of that cost there will be, right, yes. from the insurance yeah. company. So, I, I guess I'd like to be able to uh, put our best foot forward in uh, with respect to taxpayer dollars and and how we approach this and going back to the appraiser to get them to at least acknowledge um, the environmental cost will uh, give us a give us a a leg up in the discussion and one more word I would throw in on that or two more words would certainly being our being our our doing our due diligence yes that's that's what I've mentioned to them frequently before well I'd like to see Alan continue being a jerk with these people Someone like to make a motion? <laughs> don't need a motion. It comes naturally. I guess I'd like to make a motion that uh, we ask uh, our legal counsel to uh, work with the appraiser on the uh, 1002 Franklin Street pro- property and have them acknowledge the uh, potential environmental concern and uh, cost uh, notated in the appraisal. All right, there's a motion and a second on what Chris just said. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Anything else for legal counsel? We have the Main Street. You are beautiful. We just need, yeah, I, I thought, were you going to cover the appraisals on Pine Street and also, um, just, I, I was going to, but if you want to go ahead and do it, that's fine. Um, as you know, from our earlier discussion with, um, with, with, with a developer on the Pine Street property, um, and we did this last year as it related to the Cleveland Avenue property, but it dawned on me about a week or so ago that if we're going to end up, and ultimately will, we will end up um, conveying the property to some developer on Pine Street, no matter who that developer may end up being. We're going to convey that property. What that conveyance looks like, how much that conveyance is going to be for, what we're going to get from it, all of that stuff is, is up in the air. But the statute requires any property that we own, or that any public entity owns, but these specifically as it relates to the Redevelopment Commission, we have to go through the same process that we did um, we did previously on, on the Cleveland uh, Street pro- uh, Avenue pro- uh, property last last year, I believe it was. So, um, so the first step of that process is getting two appraisals for the Pine Street property, and we also know somewhere down the pike, next week, next year, next month, whatever it may end up being, we, we've got that piece of property down there um, where the you are beautiful. Uh, park sits, the former police station, former uh, news dispatch parcels. Um, we know those are going to be developed at some point. And again, we don't know when, we don't know where, or we know where, we don't know when, we don't know with who, we don't know how much, but uh, we do know that um, that we're gonna, we, we acquired that property for the sole purpose of development. Uh, so when the point in time comes when a developer is interested in that, we might as well get that out of the way now too. Uh, and maybe it ends up um, spurring some kind of discussion from some investor someplace else. They want to put a, you know, a bid on the property and a bid on that. But the point is, the statute is we might as well take care of that and not be in a situation like we are right now with Pine Street, which is something we probably should have done six, seven years ago. And let's just get this done now um, so that we're in a position that if somebody does bid on it, well, maybe we engage in conversations with them on development. If nobody does bid on it, we've, we've met our statutory responsibility and obligation um, so for that. So I, I would recommend that we go forth with getting two appraisals on both the Pine Street property uh, and then two appraisals on the um, uh, combined parcels of the former news dispatch police department down there, which now is commonly referred to as the You Are Beautiful Park. Okay, any questions, Alan, on that? Uh, Attorney Strenix, my only question is, I agree that we need to do that. My only question is that with respect to the buyer um, and, and timing, so are they, is there going to be some issue with them when we get our appraisal 
and if they we enter into something in two years versus six months from now were they going to require another one? No. Okay. The process is that with the, we get the two appraisals, then we actually have to do a, a, a listing. Um, and, and it's kind of like a basic, it's a fancy words for bid process. But we put that out there. We can either accept an offer, we can reject an offer, we can take it under advisement, negotiate with an offer. But once we've made a final decision, which ultimately, I think getting to the point you're, you're talking about, is if once we get to the point of we reject that offer, that's good forever. We've done that, and then five years from now when we want to develop You Are Beautiful, we've already met that obligation, and we don't have to worry about going back and doing that. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, anything else, Alan, on this point? Someone like to make a motion for your appraisals? I'll make a motion that we get two appraisals on the Pine Street property and the You Are Beautiful site property. Motion a second that we get two appraisals on the Pine Street property and the You Are Beautiful site. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Got it. Right. Tyler? Um, I have two items. Uh, the first one is, um, I apologize I didn't put it on the agenda, but I want to bring it up because we need to get it probably done because it actually involves the bridge. And it's the change order that came in. I actually had a change order from Lochner. There was an assumption made on the lighting on that bridge. You've probably seen the new lighting that is up on the bridge, uh, that it was it needed to be 12240. And when they went out there to, to, to actually connect, the box is actually 24480. So they've actually got to bring it down to a type two connection so that they can connect those lights, hook, hook the lights up on the bridge, basically. Um, the change order, which I don't have it before me, they're, they're preparing it for us right now that they want us to consider is for $4,138.60. That puts a new panel in, a new service in basically for one for uh, uh, 120, 240 volt. And that will run all the lights on the bridge, basically. So can I ask for a motion for that? If you so choose. Um, Again, that's the final number, four thousand one hundred thirty-eight dollars and sixty. That's what they asked. Correct. If that's okay to tell them, go forward with it. All right. Anybody like to make a motion on that? Motion second that we approve the change order, change the electric board on the bridge. Yep, the, the, the service basically. Service. Electric service. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, the second piece uh, that I have for you guys tonight is just, um, I've got this from Clarence, um, and it's just something for us to consider right now. There is a the Department of Commerce has put out a, uh, uh, through the uh, U.S. Economic Development Administration, the EDA, they're putting out a lot of money right now for um, basically co-working space, regional hubs, uh, centers, uh, incubators, business incubators, things of that nature. They do it through one of two ways. They build, they either do a, they build a brand new facility or they renovate an older building, such as down in our downtown, things like that. Um, so what I have before us, though, before we can apply for any of that money, we have to do a feasibility study, as we've heard earlier. Um, so in order to do this, um, Clarence has already went and had this prepared for us, and they're looking for about $25,000 to do a feasibility study to see if an incubator, co-working space, or regional hub, they'll probably do a study for, you know, they'll see which one fits in better. And then they want to go after uh, this EDA grants, grant money. And like I said, it can be used one or two ways. They either build a brand new building or they could renovate a building in our downtown or our near periphery, somewhere like that. Um, so what I'm, I've, I've got the proposals right here and I've also connected, I've also co attached um, some additional information that Clarence provided me, just kind of 
talking about what other communities have done with this money and how much money they received, um, the projects, and then it's got some just links in here too. And I can forward this to you digitally, but I wanted to bring you a hard copy of it tonight and just give it out and have it to be something that we could consider. He's asking that we consider funding it. Uh, it's about $25,000. Um, and to see if we can go after some of this EDA grants that's available through the U.S. Department of Commerce. So I'll uh, hand these out to you guys. Okay, Scott, you have anything else in your director report? I do not. Um, yes, one more thing. I know that we didn't put the emblems on here this time, uh, the insignias we were talking about on the bridge. Um, I would like to revisit that. Those can go on, as you've heard from Chris Murphy, those can go on at a later date because they're attached. I would like to take some time and really think about what exactly we want, we want to put on those emblems. And there's been a suggestion that we could go to some of the clubs here in town and maybe seek their, you know, some of their emblems, uh, such as rotary, things of that nature. Um, have them you know, provide an emblem, if you will. Um, but since we can put them on at a later date, I say we go ahead and let the bridge get finished and then we can choose where we want to put them on the bridge or how we want to position them on the bridge and how many do we want on the bridge. Um, so that's kind of where I, why I didn't put it on this agenda. Just I wanted to just kind of have that on there. I got asked about it earlier. So. All right. Anything that's it? Further comment? I got a comment. Sorry. Um, to pick up where Skyler left off on the IE um, DA money, um, I know that there was some work done with, between Lake County and LaPorte County working on an entrepreneurial um, center. Um, it, didn't, it didn't work out, but there was some work that has been done, um, and there was a group of, um, group of us from across both counties, including um, the community foundations that and um, not NERPSI, uh, Northwest Indiana Forum that participated. So that might be an opportunity as well, um, Skyler, as far as some more information because uh, some work was done already um, and some visits were done as well looking for um, an opportunity to do something like that between LaPorte and Lake County as well. So just FYI. Okay, thank you. Any other public comment, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. President. I have one request. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The uh, I believe the structure behind the old Chrysler dealership at the uh, corner of 11th and the Boulevard is a newspaper paper roll stand that came out of the News Dispatch building when they printed their own paper. Uh, and that the ownership of that was uh, taken by the previous uh, redevelopment commission. If if that is in in fact correct, I request that uh, you take measures to get that removed, scrapped out, whatever. It's been there too long. It's an eyesore. You know what I'm talking about. He's talking about the printer presses behind our Chrysler dealership up there. Um, the big presses that we took took out that are Over there, extremely we, thick iron we, we or metal. We took them out from the, the old uh, news dispatch building, yep. and we put them there. And they're out there in the behind right now, too. Yes, they're still there. Okay. But you're not, are you think talking, the are you talking about the actual structure took itself, ownership though? of those under the reign of Mr. Babcock. Yeah, yeah, they were they were purchased by the redevelopment commission, and we stored them there. Uh, but are you, uh, and I just want to get to the other. I don't. That's that's neither here nor there as far as my interest is concerned. I just want to make sure. Are you talking about the actual structure itself that's there, or just the printing presses? I just like to see them go away. I'm sorry. Yeah. Whatever. It takes. Are you talking about the actual structure itself, or are you talking just talking about the printing about presses? Steel frames. Yeah. yeah. Steel printing frames that held right the paper there. rolls. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I just, just just so that you understand it, just so you're aware, we entered into agreement with Nick D. For the use of that store, the, that that barn, that structure that's there, to use as storage for various kinds of materials, including the facade on the train station now in that building. 
Okay. So we need to keep that. I think that's a seven-year agreement, actually. So although we're probably in year two at this what point, what about the newspaper paper? But you're talking about the printing press stuff that's outside the building. Yeah, I it's guess. outside I guess. Okay. in the fenced right. area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, Thank you. That's, that's not contractually obligated. So. <laughs> okay. Any other public comment? Any comment from the commissioners? I'd like to make a comment. I, uh, Scholar, I appreciate you bringing us uh, the information on the incubator. Um, those uh, potential opportunities. I think in, in light of what um, the, the business community has seen, uh, you know, we had a, what I would think to be a very good incubator here for a number of years, um, and it was dismantled um, seven or eight or ten years ago. Um, I, I think with everything that's occurred in the last six months, I think companies are realizing that they have the opportunity to have their employees work from home, and commuters uh, are, uh, it's becoming more popular. Uh, I'm all in favor of trying to push the envelope on this uh, type of project. I talked to a couple uh, building owners in town about uh, some space that they have that um, um, I think this that type of uh, space is going to become more popular, and um, I, I think Michigan City, with all that's occurring, um, I think we really need to, to try to figure out a way to make that happen. So I appreciate you bringing it to us tonight and uh, be more than happy to be part of that project if it goes to the next step. All right. Any other comments from the commission? Right, hearing none, the next meeting is August 10th, and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Motion and second. Do we adjourn? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.